Good morning, Peter Garonis here, uh, entrepreneur out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm a licensed realtor and a property manager owner as well. Um, in part, what I do is I share information that I've obtained from other people, other people that are smarter than me, uh, other people that have seen more success than me in their selective fields. And I do this for two reasons. One is um, I learn much better when I regurgitate and talk about what I've come across. So if I've read a book and the information in the book for me to remember much better is by actually expressing what I learned through that book to other people, friends, family, or a platform like this. Um, if I'm on traveling and business meetings, if I'm meeting uh, people halfway across the world in networking events, the first thing I try and do after taking notes is actually go back and spread the information. And I do that to help me remember that content. But the second reason that I also do it is, is kind of my way of paying it forward. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff that helped me uh, through my life, in particular the last seven years in business, last 10 years in business, uh, came in the form of videos like this one from other people or from books like the one I'm going to talk about today from other people. And uh, any of the small wins that I had along the way came from other people's sharing of information, well, suggestions, opinions that were valuable. And so that's kind of my way of paying it forward to people that are watching right now um, in hopes that it's going to help you go from where you are to uh, where you want to be, or at least somewhere on that curvature. So um, the topic I want to talk about today or the book that I'm talking about right now is actually called Choice Theory. Okay, um, It's by William Glasser, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, and basically, the book itself is written by a psych psychiatrist. And uh, I'll preframe this, it's a, it's a little controversial. And, and what makes it controversial is that uh, Will Glasser, in his opinion, talks about how to, how to repair or at least progress forward for people that struggle immensely with anxiety, uh, high depression, uh, potential suicide or suicidal thoughts. Um, it also helps and talks about people that aren't in those states and how they can actually control uh, their personal environments, whether it's relationships with family, relationships with friends, uh, how to be a better parent, a mother or a father, how to, uh, you know, how to bring your child up into the world. Uh, all of that stuff, it's all encompassing because he uses the same skill sets and the same tools to talk about all that. But I'm making the video particularly because I happen to agree with what he's saying or the message that he's delivering and going back to what I just said two seconds ago about this being a potential controversial topic um, I'll preframe by saying I, I totally understand and respect um, that people go through uh, tough times and that there's a spectrum of that there's 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 people that don't go through tough times or aren't in a tough time presently uh, because everyone goes through tough times at some point but at the current moment in their lives are everything is perfect for lack of a better word all the way up to literally people taking their lives. And at some point or another, we all fall in that spectrum of time uh, because things happen to us, right? Life, bad business decisions, you fall down, scrape your knee, um, you forgot your lunch at home, um, you're suffering immense depression and it's, 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 it's a form of paralysis and, and all of these things happen to us. And what I've noticed a lot of uh, in those situations, you know, we talk about mental health quite a bit, uh, and it's a very important topic. But a lot of the times, you talk, you hear psychologists or psychiatrists talk about going back to, you know, your childhood, or going back to uh, the deep, dark, glooming disasters that really were the the cause of your concern or cause of your pain, and trying to figure out why that happened and trying to unbundle that. And I always found that confusing for me. And, and the reason I found that confusing is because the only set, set of skill sets that I had around this topic as a coach, or as a leader, uh, as a divisional manager, as a senior leader in a top performing, high performing company was when someone had a problem, one of my associates had a problem or if someone had a tough time dealing with a certain situation, you know, whether it was in something like sales or whether it was something in their personal life, uh, the tools and resources we were given really emphasized on talking about what you can do at this moment going forward. In other words, what can you control personally that can get you from where you are right in this minute to where you want to be? The only time we really ever talked about the past was when it was a past positive. So to give an example, when was a time in the past that was actually a really good time for you or that you felt your happiest or that you saw your most success um, or that you were overcoming that challenge then? in which the same challenge you're having today and we're trying to figure out. That was the only time we kind of reached into the past with that platform or that perspective or those tools. 
Yet most times when you talk to psychiatrists or, or, or what you read about psychiatrists, they actually go back and they try and open up that wound and open up that pain because the belief is if you open it up, you could probably just crush it, smash it and completely get rid of it. And only then can you move forward. Now, Will Glasser, William Glasser actually um, his opinion is the exact opposite of going back and talking about that pain. He very much like the tools that I just shared about you that we were provided uh, in, in a top performing company on how to be a better leader and how to be a better manager and how to lead your people out of situations. He too talks about honing in on what you can control at this moment. What are things that are within your actual influence and control that you personally can take ownership over and change the outcome of the path or the direction that you're going. Um, he doesn't believe in going back and talking about why you feel the way you do to an extent or, or you know, what, when, what, when it's not a good situation, um, let's unbundle that, let's talk about that. He really doesn't believe in that. Um, and I found it really, really interesting. The other thing he does that I really wanted to share that I, I found super cool was his choice of language when he talks about depression, when he talks about anxiety. Um, you know, someone like you or and I, if we're in a state of, you know, if we're feeling anxious or if we're feeling uh, depressed, so to speak, we'll say that. We'll say, I'm anxious or I'm depressed. And uh, William Glasser actually talks about changing the language around that. He doesn't believe that when, it's not a defining, it's not a moment of definition of who you are when you are in those states, regardless of the level in which you are in those states. So I think that there's probably going to be people that come across this video that may have friends or family or they themselves suffer from a high level of anxiety or an incredible, incredible high level state of, of depression that think I'm dismissing you know, those challenges that they're going through or think that I fully don't understand um, the extent in which they challenge themselves on this. And that's not at all what I'm doing. I, what I'm saying is that this man believes in his read that language and verbiage on how we talk about things really does matter. It really does shape our mind and shape how we actually perceive things to be. And when our perception of things changes, ultimately, so does the way we respond to those things. And when, when our response to those situations changes, ultimately, so does our outcome, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a completely different result. Whereas he's talking about changing that action or behavior because you've actually changed the verbiage around it. So an example is he doesn't say someone's depressed. He says someone is depressing. So he takes it from, he moves it into a verb state because it's something that you do. You know, when you're feeling down and we're feeling lonely, or if it's to the extent that you're feeling paralyzed and you wake up in the morning and you just genuinely feel like you can't get out of bed rather than saying I'm depressed or rather than having that preframe of I'm depressed. He says, you're not depressed. He says, you're, in, you're depressing. You're depressing, which means that you can change the fact that you're depressing. You could go harder by letting that control you or, or, or finding yourselves winding into that. Or you can recognize that, understand the narrative, and peel it back a little bit by actually changing some of your actions. I think it's a really powerful read. So I recommend this book for anybody who is suffering uh, uh, or has experienced depression on any level, who's suffering or has experienced any level of anxiety, um, or anybody who really just wants to understand how to take a little bit more control of the things that you that, that are in your environment, your circle of understanding, so to speak. You know, if you want to improve your relationships with people, your friends, your family, your spouses, which most people do, um, I think this will give you a, a, a really good contextual conception of what he believes on a neurological level actually can take place and how you can rectify those things. You know, there's a couple other quotes in here and messages that he shares that I think are incredibly powerful. Um, and I won't get into the details of that, but this is a book that I, like I just said, I recommend any of you that have talked about that depression, anxiety, any of those things, or who, you know, even more so if you're someone who is, has a hard time understanding mental health, or when you hear that this person's depressed or this person's anxious, oh, they're calling in work, calling in a sick work again, etc. Maybe you're the far, you're at the far end of the spectrum on the other way. This book might actually give you context to a reinforce your belief that you can control things, uh, controversial or not, and b might even bring you in a little bit to to allow you to empathize with some of the people that are going through those things, but without really allowing it to 
excuse people's behavior on a day to day, professionally, personally, or, or in between. Guys, my name is Peter G. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, officially, I'm a licensed realtor and I own a property management company and ultimately what I do is I help solve other people's problems. Most times what I enjoy doing as a hobby is sharing information and I share information like this to, to people like you who are watching right now because there's so much out there um, that can get really clogged up and, and, and confusing for people. And it's books like this, it's messages like these ones that hopefully you, you, you hear my voice, you see what I'm talking about. It inspires you a little bit to say, hey, let me see what this guy's talking about. Let me see what this guy's talking about. Um, because although I'm not a doctor and although I'm not a, 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 a counselor, I, I don't have a master's in counseling like my wife's does. I'm not certified in that nature by any means. This guy is. And although, um, and not only is he, but he's, he's, he's coming head on with a big problem that we're facing in present day with a lot of people suffering from, from anxiety and depression and, and mental health and, and more than ever in our history. And I know the argument or some people might make the argument that, you know what, it's probably or it could be possibly always have been this case, uh, but we just it was taboo to talk about it. That might be true. Um, I have no way to prove that or disprove that. Personally, I don't believe that's the case. I think with everything that's happening right now, social media, all of this information that's constantly coming our way, seeing people who are 15, 16, 17, 18 years old making millions of dollars online, um, what looks to be with very little work, although that's also not true, um, that we feel like we're playing catch up all the time. 25 year olds feel like they're wasting their life because they're 20, 25 years old and they haven't even you know, broke their first million dollars and so on and so forth. So I, I, I believe that mental health is accelerating because in part to a lot to do with this stuff. So listen, Choice Theory, William Glasser, strongly recommend the read. My name is Peter G, licensed realtor, entrepreneur at Halifax, Nova Scotia. Appreciate you guys for paying attention. If you found this valuable at all, and I'm gonna continue to do these and post these videos because I enjoy it. One, I learn by replicating what I heard and what I read and what I was told. And two, I know that it's valuable information. Please subscribe to the channel. Let's get this thing blown up so that we can see more of these videos going forward. Thanks, peace.